Hi, my name is Antonio. I like learning about cooperatives and this video is going to be about what a cooperative should be. What should you look for when you're looking at a cooperative? In the words of the of the cooperative itself, what does their organization try strive to become? And for that, we'll be looking at the Mondragon Corporation, the largest and probably most famous uh, grouping of corporate uh, <laughs> of cooperatives in the world. Uh, specifically, we will be looking at the uh, 10 principles that they use to guide themselves and their activity in Spain and across the world. For the sake of time, and because I kind of want to wait and inform myself more, I'll be um, skipping over a few nuances and details. And my opinion of Mondragon is um, mixed. I, I think it's a really good example of a cooperative because it shows you their potential. Um, it's not limited just to tiny little organizations, but it also shows you their limitations and how it's, it's almost physically impossible for even a, a large co uh, co cooperative like Mondragon to live up to its own ideals in this current time, in this current situation. It's just hard. Uh, maybe not impossible. Uh, but that's for later. Uh, let's just get down to the list. So the 10 principles that uh, Mondragon uses to conduct business. Number one, anyone who accepts the 10 principles can join. Pretty simple. Two, democratic organization. It runs on a one person, one vote. One member gets to cast votes in important elections when making important decisions. And let's say you, you try thinking, you, you think um, it's not possible to run a massive organization democratically. It won't, it, it pro probably won't work out well. Let's say you think that. Um, well, a lot of massive governments try to op operate democratically. So it's just applying that idea to businesses. I'm not saying that businesses are countries. Uh, it's just scale is not an issue. Small, local, regional, national, international. The massive scale of an organization doesn't have to mean that it can function as a democracy. Um, it can work. It, you just need to put in the work. So principle number three, sovereignty of labor. Labor and the workers who do it are the most important uh, part of the cooperative. And compensation is based on the work each member puts in and how much that work uh, contributes to the profit. Related to that, very related, it is principle number four, the instrumental and subordinated nature of capital. Capital. So capital is a tool. It's the money financing to ensure the money and maybe the loans the equipment, the land, the, the buildings uh, being used to finance the operation, the cooperative. It's obviously essential, but it's really just viewed as a tool, a means to an end and doesn't and must not control the decisions or the um, profits of the corporation. In other words, uh, how I see it, combined with the sovereignty of labor principle, number three, it's not necessarily people over profit. It's really just saying that decisions still have to be practical, that they still have to benefit the co-op, that a decision could be made to choose to focus on profit, but it's the workers, the members deciding to do that, not um, the typical stockholders, not the typical investors um, that you and I might uh, think of first. So number five, participation in management. It's not just enough to say, yeah, I'm a member of a cooperative um, they really want you to participate, to see what it's like to do management duties, to see what do you like, what do you not like. Um, but more importantly, maybe more basically, is just to know what those duties are, what re what's required to do them. Maybe you might be able to do them yourself. It's not useful for everyday work, but let's just say it's better for the workers so that they can know, hey, we could do this ourselves if we want. Let's say they even decide to leave and start their own cooperative. They already know what to do in terms of management, or at least some idea. Principle number six, wage solidarity. Um, they try to keep everyone's wages within a certain range. So the lowest paid person, their wages is within six to seven times of the highest paid person. I couldn't find a, a Mondragon source for this, but it seems they started out with a three to one pay ratio. So the highest paid person was paid maximum three times more than the lowest paid person. That was in 1956 when they first started. Now it's risen maybe seven, eight, uh, nine times greater than the lowest paid person. 
because it's hard to maintain people who do management decisions and then get to see other people in other companies like, hey, I can get paid more. I'll just go over there. Um, so they've had to change to maintain um, uh, their management people. Uh, again, different sources gave me different numbers. I need to find a more recent one to pin down the source. Number seven, the principle of intercooperation. So cooperatives helping the cooperative movement. Right? That might involve helping cooperatives. If you you are helping another cooperative, that might be to reduce costs, to expand their reach, to diversify or offer new services, etc. If you make if your cooperative makes one part, or um, and then there's another business that makes um, a related part and or a component, you work together, bring your costs down, uh, making you more competitive in the market. Okay, principle eight, social transformation. It's the commitment to the supportive, sustainable development of your local area, of our local area. So instead of polluting, destroying, or outright abandoning um, the community, the city around uh, your business, uh, you should try to support them. A lot of the your workers, if you're in a cooperative, uh, Mondragon, in the Basque region, they probably live very close to um, where Mondragon operates. So it's in their interest to not destroy um, their, con their own community. Easier said than done, and everyone has a different opinion when it comes down to what supportive, sustainable development means. But for the business, for the workers, um, for the community, I think it's just better if you try not to destroy the people around you and support them. I think it's a good uh, practical and beneficial um, attempt principle to maintain yeah. principle number nine universality fully embracing the goals of the international cooperative movement it's just there are a lot of cooperatives a lot across the world a lot you've probably heard of some besides mondragon maybe ocean spray um there's one i think rei it's a consumer cooperative but they're mostly invisible so well, they can kind of be ignored because their impact isn't as large but they're there um, and they can grow. So Mondragon really wants to help cooperatives grow for new cooperatives to start across the world. People and organizations across the world are interested in expanding cooperation. But it could also just be, at least in my opinion, um, just support workers to get more control. And, and that might mean helping union, uni unionizations, or something like um, employees stock option plans, which are really common in the US, a different video. Uh, I don't actually know if Mondragon supports those, but really I think helping workers get more control, however that might be, cooperative or not, I think that's in line with this principle. And last principle, number 10, is the importance of education. So you want to invest money and time and effort into making your workers more educated, to improve the skills they have, to get, get them new skills, to help them learn how to be better cooperators, which is how they call people who are in cooperatives. Because it takes a lot of skills that are usually discouraged, honestly, by companies, um, school systems and governments. Communication skills, learning how to cooperate uh, with people because it, it can be really hard. Really the opposite of what you would usually do to your workers. You want to educate them, make them better, stronger um, people. Um, and that should help the cooperative. And three things to point out. The first one is um, education, excuse me. The importance of education, that last principle. It's rela related to why, one reason I really like cooperatives. Um, because I can I can try to compare it to, um, learn. It, cooperative is like uh, learning how to fish versus, or being, being, being given the opportunity to go fish yourself and being able to do it versus um, being given a fish or being given the option to purchase a fish. The analogy breaks down, so, but point is that people get to experience and they're taught how it's like to work in large democratic organizations, what they like, what they don't like about them, what works, what doesn't, how they fail and why they fail. It lets them internalize what it really means to be part of a successful democracy instead of just being given a democracy by politicians by rich people by people in who think they already have the best answers to problems cooperatives teach you democracy the good and uh, the bad the, the difficult 
Second point, these principles are flexible for better and for worse. Excuse me. Uh, for example, the, the wage solidarity. If you absolutely need to hire an engineer and it's really difficult, it's really competitive, a lot of people want to hire it, you can offer a higher wage than you would typically offer to that engineer. The group of people, the person in charge of deciding that has to see, is it, will the cooperative benefit? Yes, it's a good fit, blah, blah, blah. We'll offer them and there you go. So it can be flexible in that way. It could also be flexible in a bad way. So if a branch business is, let's say they're not in Spain, let's say they're working in um, some South American country and they need, they're struggling. The, the cooperative there is struggling. Uh, forget wage solidarity. We need to pay these workers less or we're going to go down in that country. So in that sense, it could also be flexible in a bad way. Point number three to take away is these principles uh, give you a reference point. They give you a, a vague, um, at least I hope, a vague expectation of what a cooperative should be, what you should look for in a cooperative. It's also connective tissue with a lot of cooperatives across the world because Mondragon tries to expand cooperation. And again, a lot of people and organizations are interested. So these 10 principles are taken by other people, other groups, and adopted, changed uh, to fit their own situations because they think it will help them start their own successful cooperative. So point is, uh, these principles of cooperation, principles like these unite, um, they're an agreed upon kind of uh, across the world, and they give you an idea of what to look for in these cooperatives, especially in the ones I mentioned or the ones you discover yourself. Surely there's one in your city, um, your country. I really encourage you to uh, look them up just for sake of finding out, hey, is there one near me? You will probably find out that there is some cooperative activity near you. So that's that. Uh, next time is probably a slightly more in-depth look at the Mondragon structure and recent history. Um, but that's all for now. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a good time.